Yeah. Myself and Alex are going to be demonstrating uh, embedded um, Linux in the Chromebook ROM today. Um, now, before we start, I just want to draw your attention to the laptop. This is Alex's HP Pavilion Chromebook. And if Alex can move his hands, you can see that there's no USB keys or devices in anywhere, okay? Just so that you know, we're actually running it off the system itself. And we've already gone into the C BIOS menu. And you can see there, you've got a second option, which is RAM disk, which is where the... Um, the embedded Linux run, runs from. Okay, so right, if Alex would like to press 2 and get us started. You can see here we've started, uh, all you have to do is type in root and press enter to log in. And then the next thing is to bring up the loopback interface, ifconfig. space low space up and then press enter okay and then we have to edit the uh, WPA supplicant configuration file to give it the correct wireless settings so if you type in vi space forward slash etc forward slash wpa and press the tab key that's it press enter then uh, press i to go into insert mode and go down to ssid or your, your ssid that's it and change it press your power space forward slash etc sorry minus c just copy the line above, that's it, the end of it. Press enter. Now, this is just connecting to the wireless network. We're just waiting for the associated message, which has come up. And then we need to type DHCPCD. DHCP CD space WLAN zero press enter. Now we're going to get an IP address from our router. Okay, now we're ready to go. If you type MB N for Norman B N for Norman, N for Norman, command B, press tab, press enter. Now you can see we've got our Netboot CD menu here, which is completely unmodified. It's the same script that's on the Netboot CD website. Um, I have some ideas for extending it, but for the moment, for demonstration purposes, and to start off, we're just going to leave it as it is. So if you press enter there, Alex. We're going to install our um, Linux. Now, you said you wanted Ubuntu 64 bit, didn't you? Yeah. Okay, so hit OK on that. OK there. So, yeah. Now, this is downloading a kernel and uh, init RAM disk image um, from the Ubuntu servers, and it's then going to use KXEC to. Uh, to actually start it and then it'll go into the installer. Um, while we're waiting for that, I can talk a little bit about the embedded Linux. Um, it has to be very small because CBIOS um, can't fit a, f a floppy disk image of more than uh, 2.88 megs. Um, so it has to fit inside 2.88 megs, which is um, harder than perhaps it might sound, you know, because you disable things in the kernel or disable things in the build route and then you find out that you need them and it won't work. So more, more or less I spent the last, most of the last five days getting this to work. But I thought it'd be worth it because I think it's just really, a really cool thing to be able to do. 
I'm not aware of anybody else having a Linux system in, embedded into a laptop ROM. So it kind of shows the power of uh, Chromebooks. Uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a Euclid-C based um, Linux. Um, and as I just mentioned there, it's made with Bill Bruce. Um, but I've kept the kernel external because the kernel actually has the scripting to create the um, floppy disk image. Can you there now? Now it's going to start the installer after some coming and hour in. So, um, yeah, just press enter there, Alex, and then go to your noisy kingdom, that'll do. Uh, to check keyboard layer, say uh, no. Uh, just choose that one, enter. Enter again. Um, press down to go to the WLAN interface, that's it. And go down to that one. Press enter. WPA peer, that's it. Press enter again. Alex, if you just change the name to something like Alex, Alex dash HP Pavilion. HP fourteen. No, no, that's mine's HP fourteen, isn't it? How do you spell Pavilion? Then press enter. Enter again. Right, enter again. Enter again. Right. I think it's going to take a minute or two to download this. We can talk a bit more about the embedded distro. Um, it's literally, it, it's had almost everything taken out of it, even a lot of um, BusyBox functionality to to get the last few K because uh, even as it is of less than 100k of space in the image to, to play with. Uh, so the only tools that are in the image apart from BusyBox itself are the KXX tools for loading the, um, the kernel and uh, WPA supplicant. And WPA supplicant takes up quite a bit of space. Um, kernel itself hasn't even got the block device layer uh, and things like that in. Um, obviously removed all debugging si si symbols and uh, every almost every driver except the network uh, network driver for the wireless card and also a um, Realtek 8139 because they've been testing this image with uh, Kemu so I don't have to keep um, right into my flash and wearings. Now just type in my name. Your name. Capital Alex. Man. Press enter. That'll do. Put your password in. Actually, not, not your normal password, is it? No. Why not? Why not? Okay, say it then. You can change it later. No, there. Say yep. So basically, all the um, the driver functionality comes from the kernel that we've kexec. Um, 
For the enter manual there, we're going to use the whole disk just as one route. I'll, I'll, I'll do this bit. Use as. Um, mount point root. Boost will flag on. And we want to format it as well. So this is it, Alex. Point of no return. Okay. Yeah. You sure? Yes. Absolutely. I think so. Yes. So if we need to swap, we can add a swap file based on disk. Anyway, the idea for this was given me for uh, given to me for from a guy on the yes, Arch forums um, who is in the C seven twenty thread called the Trina, and he was talking about using IPXE. And I looked into using that, and I found out that there's not a driver for the AR nine four six two wireless card in IPXE, so it was never going to work basically. And, it's restricted to 128k, so there's not enough space to uh, to run a WPA client. Uh, so that kind of restricts you. You know, even if you had a driver, you'd have to disable security on your router. So I thought this would be a much better solution. You know, people don't have to mess with their routers or mess with um, USB media and things like that. I think we'll probably just leave that running and um, start videoing again when it's finished. Or maybe not, I don't know. How long is it going to take? Cautious. It's going to take a while, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, okay, we'll stop with it.